Hi, everybody. It is me, Mr. Gaming Guitarist, a.k.a. Jaren. And I have been receiving a lot of uh, messages in my chat room whenever I'm doing my guitar or my gaming live streams over the last couple of days. People have been telling me about this YouTube channel called Think Before You Sleep, and a lot of them wanted to see my reaction to it. Um, they're telling me that in this video, I get talked about, like I'm what, like I, they told me that somewhere in the 20 minute video, I mean, somewhere like at the 20 minute mark, um, I get mentioned. And they told me, uh, yeah, my audience, or not, well, I, let's just say I've been getting a ton of people telling me about it, like, that's the most common thing, so I decided, okay, I'm gonna sit down, and I'm gonna watch this. Now, I've never heard of Think Before You Sleep. I don't know what this channel is, so, but so many people have been requesting for me to do this, so I'm gonna do it. All right, let me bring it, the video up on OBS. And here we go. I am a 33 year old woman with no direction in life and I wanna talk about it. I was hmm. gonna get married. I got married and then divorced. I wanted a big career. I started having a nice, okay career and then that pummeled. I no longer know what I want, even hmm. though I planned this life since I was really young. Lately, I've been seeing a lot of- All right, so right away, that first, um, that first woman there, I can relate to what she was saying. And she is 33, I'm 29. But, you know, that whole thing of, this is what you want in life, and then you feel so upset and disappointed every single day because your life isn't what you wanted it to be, but, you know, that's the exact... It's reminding me of how I was when I made that video, which, you know, I don't have to mention it because that's how so many of my peop of the viewers watching me found my channel, but I'll, I will only refer to it as that video which represented a me during a very depressed moment. And hopefully now people are seeing the real me, which is me watching this video right now. I'm not depressed, just simply taking a look at this. These kinds of videos in my feed about people with no direction who are failing in life. These are people who are depressed, lonely, mm. have no friends, mm. or have never been in a relationship. Mm. And these videos yep. are getting a lot of views. This one's called, I'm a 33-year-old woman with no life. My advice to young women. And it has over 1 million views on wow, it. Wow, 1 million, so you probably okay. probably shouldn't take advice from someone who just spent 10 minutes telling you that they're a failure. This one here also has over a million views. And, and here's one with 6 million. 6 million? The more interesting part of this phenomenon Goodness. is that none of these people talking about their experiences are big creators. All of them come from small channels of people who had like five viewers prior, and these videos are still blowing up, which mm. unfortunately probably means that a lot of people strongly connect to this message. Mm. But what's really frustrating is that while the creators of these videos that I'm showing aren't really pessimistic, there's a pretty sizable portion of people online who are failing in life and spend a lot more time blaming society or other people for their problems yep. than they do working on themselves. That's very true. They also true. create these really negative philosophies and victimize themselves mm -hmm. to garner sympathy from others and justify their position in life instead That's... of actually making changes. And Ev Everything that he is saying right now is exactly what my previous mindset was. Like, he is hitting the nail right on the head. Really kind of annoying. Probably the most recent public example of this is from the documentary on Boogie2988, where he says he wants mm. to make things better and he wants to change his life, but when he tries to get a job, you can see him sabotaging himself by saying a bunch of things that make him unemployable as a way to get the recruiter to feel bad for him. I am disabled. 
the, the downside of that is I am extremely depressed. So there's some mental health issues that we bring to the table. And then physically, uh, I, I am morbidly obese. I have no references, uh, no work history, and no education. I'm also a felon. What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. I did work in the porn industry for the better part of seven years, so. What? Boogie did that? Because all I, I remember him when, you know, he made those videos is that character Francis, but what I, I, because I have no idea what's going on with, because here's the thing is I really don't want to follow drama going on between going on with different YouTubers because it, it just really annoys me when I see people talking shit about other YouTubers because I'd much rather just, I don't want to deal with any of that. I'd rather just go the other direction because there's already enough negative energy in the world. Why is it that when you go home after working throughout the day, why do you want to watch more, watch people on YouTube talking shit about other YouTubers that just, I just don't understand that. And I severely disagree with channels that do that, but I am not here to tell those channels to stop doing what they're doing. I'm just going to keep doing my own thing. I mean, be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? So because there are a lot of self sat That is so fucking weird. Like, I, oh God, I don't even, God, it's like, why is there a professional camera following him in an inner, whatever, fuck it. Sabotaging <clears throat> victims who are in internet comment sections or on Reddit complaining about how the world is against them and there's nothing they can do. For those who are willing to listen, let's talk about some of the very identifiable reasons that these people aren't doing well, starting with this girl, Akuto, who can't find a job. When I was in college, I studied video production. I studied um, basically a very interesting version of journalism. And I wasn't, I didn't know I wanted to be in journalism, but um, I knew for sure that I didn't want to tell like sad story. So I didn't really aim to do journalism, but that's what basically my major was. There are only a handful of degrees that are worth getting in college and journalism is not one of them. Mm. Maybe back in the nineties it was, but she's 33. So she would have been in college around 2008 when internet blogs were prominent. So this probably was the worst time to spend a bunch of money on a degree, considering that if you had the drive to practice on your own to get mm. good enough at writing to be worth hiring, then you likely could have just published your own stuff or made a YouTube channel. She also indicated that she didn't really like her major, which is a big sign that she should have picked something else or not gone to college. I, I graduated college. <clears throat> I got an internship. This is, life is gonna be good, life is gonna be good. And then I never got jobs. <laughs> now one could argue mm. that she went to college to learn stuff, but considering that they didn't teach her enough about writing to be employable, the courses probably weren't very good. I applied for, you know, companies like Britco, BuzzFeed, Yahoo, like all their like fun media department jobs. I applied for them, nobody. Video, I applied for video editing jobs, nobody. More proof she didn't need that degree. These days, maybe the only argument for not just learning how to write on your own is that in college, you can be taught and be held to a code of ethics that a journalist is supposed to have. However, in 2015, when she graduated, any random blog had more journalistic integrity than BuzzFeed. Oh God, doing the math on that, she burned a seven year period of her life on a degree that led to no money. Everybody, you need to assess if college is actually right for you. Don't just go because you were told to. Yes, okay, that is one thing I strongly agree with. Because it, when I was in, in high school, I felt so pressured to go to college because, you know, that's everyone says, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. But I hated school so much 
the idea of having to go to even more school just I didn't I wanted nothing to do with it but then I found some sort of compromise or some sort of halfway happy way to get into it where I went to the art institute and I went there for eight months for audio production and I quit because I wasn't happy with it. I just, it's not what I wanted. I didn't want to deal with it. And it just feels like everything they were teaching, it was all stuff I could learn on my own. This is not worth the 80000 or seven, whatever the number was. I believe it was $80,000 tuition cost. And I'm still having to pay a damn student loan after only being there for six months. Or no, sorry, eight months. And yeah, I'm just glad that it feels like society is in a place right now where you don't... I, I have a feeling that Gen Z doesn't feel as much insane pressure to go to college if they don't want to because i absolutely felt the pressure and that's when i learned knowing what i know now i never would have done it it's very easy to do market research and make sure a degree is actually worth it and don't forget that trade schools take way less time and lead to a lot of good paying jobs i never i had a few interviews but i never got jobs i never got jobs and it just Nobody wanted to hire me. Nobody wanted to give me opportunities. Nobody wanted, I, I don't know if they thought I was too dumb to do the work. They kept, the thing I kept getting was, this is literally what I keep getting today in my 33 years is you don't have enough experience. You don't know what you're doing, so we can't hire you. But it's like, well, how am I gonna get experience if I don't, if you don't hire me? And that's still the struggle today. So this is the part that gets frustrating Okay, so I understand a little bit about that because for a period of time when I when I used to work at Kroger as a bagger, and then I quit because I hated it. I was there for four months, and then I worked a temporary position at GameStop like during the Christmas season almost a year later. I never want to deal with that shit ever again. Because I just learned I don't like regular regular jobs. And Uber, thank God, is the closest thing to a regular job that I'm good at. And the flexibility of it is amazing. It's what helps me uh, support myself. And it's what also what helps me, you know, continue to build this YouTube channel for me. And you'll see this trait in a lot of people who are in a bad position later on in life. They literally told you why you didn't get the job. They've been telling you for years and you aren't listening. They said you don't have enough experience and you don't know what you're doing. So we can't hire you. You don't need to work at Buzzfeed to practice. Well, I will say because I tried applying at other places like you name it. I tried applying, but you know, this is before, I discovered Uber and this was before, like even during that dark period for those couple months earlier this year, when I want to say this was during, um, in March when I had that accident, um, and I was stuck at home for two months. That's when I, when I forced myself to apply and that's when I applied to, you know, any retail store you think of it i i applied there target best buy um target best buy walmart a lot of those places and they just rejected my application and or i did have one interview with best buy but it wasn't in person it was something where you answer questions um it was weird i don't know i guess that's the new standard now but I, they didn't hire me, um, 
And in hindsight, I'm glad they didn't because it allowed me to get to where I am now with can, being able to come back to Uber as well as, you know, being able to put the time into all of these videos and live streams. Practice writing articles. You don't need a job at Sony to learn video editing. You can practice this stuff on YouTube or Substack without talking to a hiring manager. Mm. I mean, you're 33 and you graduated how long ago? You've had almost a decade to practice these skills, so you should be an expert by now, yet you're having trouble getting entry-level positions. Why aren't you working on your marketable skills? Now, I haven't seen anything she's written, but she did mention that she interviewed for video editing jobs. I've watched a number of her videos, and there's barely any editing in them. The most complex thing I've seen her do is this YouTube subscribe button that is probably just a pre-rendered effect that someone else made. So all she had to do was spend five seconds dragging it onto our timeline. Most of her videos contain zero editing, except for a title card, and maybe every so often she'll flash something on screen that she recorded in OBS or put up a borderless image with no interesting effects on it. This is stuff that any beginner editor can do. These jobs on the low end where she lives in California go for about fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year. Why would someone pay a beginner fifty to sixty K for a skill set they can learn in a few hours? If you want a career, you have to build skill first. And there have been plenty of opportunities that this girl Akudo could have utilized to practice over the last 15 years, like editing Twitch highlights for a random channel for free. Now she wants to be a YouTuber because one video did well, but unless she practices creator skills, she won't succeed at that either. Mm. Anybody can say their opinion in front of a camera. The reason people get paid to say their opinion is because they're good at saying it in a way that catches people's attention. If you don't know mm. how to do that, you won't succeed at content creation. That's a good, okay, that's a really good thing he said. Being able to say your opinion in a way that lets, that resonates with others. You know, I'm pretty sure that's why, you know, the whole, that's why my viral video went viral. Because it was me not caring at all about the result. And I'm just emptying my thoughts out without a care if anyone watched it or not. That was my mindset, and I'm pretty sure that's why a lot of the other videos that I make aren't, don't make the same amount of views as that because it captured a spur of the moment thing, and it feels like I'm constantly just trying to. come up with ways for me to still be myself and yet, you know, be able to make more videos enough, have my videos get enough views to where it can provide my full-time income. Uh, I have a lot of stuff that I still have to learn. I'm very well aware of that, but... That's, uh, uh, everything that he's saying here is 100% true. So one of the issues that is causing people to be depressed or lonely is that they simply haven't built any useful or marketable skills. However, that's not the only issue. The biggest issue I see with people who are depressed and lonely is that pretty much all of them have no idea how to present themselves. A lot of the time mm. I think of myself as ugly and... I don't think that that's a bad thing. A lot of the time it's just something that I can accept and be cool with and get on and I can just be okay with it. You don't have to accept being ugly. One thing that I've learned over the years is that most people are reasonably attractive or they're at least attractive enough to get what they want. There mm. are very few helpless cases that can't be fixed with some fashion advice provided that you didn't destroy your body with morbid obesity. Outside of that, in my opinion, if you think you're ugly, there's a 90% chance that you actually aren't. First and foremost, just shower. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with how you see yourself because a lot of the time you get so stuck in your head and that energy of you thinking that you're ugly or you're thinking you're not good enough Anytime you talk to someone, they can sense that energy from you. And that's why it's very important that everybody meditates. Because 
it helps you stay in the present and all these thoughts that you have they don't get stuck in your head and it changes your energy field all of this stuff that i'm saying i learned this all from dr joe dispenza he i give him a lot of credit for saving or for drastically improving my mental health because i began watching his interviews in october of 2022 and it really resonated with me it felt like he was describing me better than i could describe myself and it led me on the path to whatever growth i'm seeing now <clears throat> Literally, just shower. Okay, so I'm a mess right now, and I was actually going to shower, even though it's almost 3 o'clock, but the water was all cold, so... No luck. The water was all- So fucking what if the water was all cold? I don't wanna- uh, I shit you're supposed to shower so that you don't feel like expired ham. <laughs> Because that's how I feel, you know, when the days whenever I would get so depressed and I wouldn't shower for two or three days. At the end of it, I tell, I, you know, I come to the realization enough is enough. And I'm tired of my skin feeling like expired ham. That's what it feels like when you haven't showered. Yeah, I can tell. Now, I know there's like an incel meme out there of them getting mad because people told them to fix their appearance by showering. But literally, just showering would up this girl's appearance by three points if we're talking about a 1 to 10 scale. She looks like a wet dog here with her hair <laughs> oily and flat to her head. This doesn't look good, and it throws off the entire proportion of her face. Speaking of showering, check out Reed Street Soap to find the best <laughs> soap. One of the worst things you can do Oh, for that's a funny transition. That, no matter how good you look. And it's funny because I just got out of the damn shower. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. <clears throat> Still in the process of regrowing my hair back. <clears throat> People will not want to be around you if you smell like crap. Fortunately, All right, I'm going to smell bad. Link in the description. Okay. All right. Outside of purchasing quality soap, if you smell bad, then I recommend using baking soda to clean all the areas that smell, like your armpits. Have you ever showered and still smelled BO on you even though you use soap? Baking soda will fix that. Baking soda first, and then soap everything. It's so strange, though, that he has to be talking about this. Like, all this stuff he's talking about, about showering and all that stuff, it feel, that should be common sense. I, 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 like, are there seriously people out there that are watching this and they're going to start doing it after watching this video? It's like, this is all stuff that I learned about when I was a toddler. Eh. down to give yourself a good fragrance you can also brush your tongue with baking soda if you have bad breath however don't use it to brush your teeth but i'm mentioning this because all types of people underestimate how much smelling good matters smelling bad can easily change a 9 out of 10 to a 3 out of 10 on the yep, flip side that's very if true. you smell good that will improve your number anyway back to kara just like a lot of overweight people don't want to be told that they're not fat I don't want to be told that I'm not ugly. I don't want to call myself unconventionally pretty. I am happy a lot of the time to think of myself as ugly. Cope. That sounds like someone, she sounds a lot, she reminds me a lot of me. Now, I never had those specific thoughts, but I can clearly tell that's someone who's very depressed, who hasn't listened to Joe Dispenza yet. <laughs> Nobody wants to be seen as ugly. Stop lying to yourself. Just admit you care so you can start fixing the problem. Recently, I read a book called The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt, and there were a lot of really interesting studies in there about psychology. In one of them, done by Mark Leary in 2004, 
they wanted to see how much people cared about what other people think of them. Mm. So they took people who said they didn't care about what others thought of them mm. and tested them against people who said they did. Each person was isolated, put in a room, and was told to talk about themselves for five minutes. While they were talking, the researchers flashed a number that would let the subjects know how much a person in another room wanted to interact with them in the next part of the study. A high number was good, a low number was bad. Except, the numbers were fixed by the researchers, so it didn't matter how interesting the test subject was. They increased or decreased the number to watch the speaker's responses. The funny part is that everybody cared what people thought about them and suffered a self-esteem drop when the numbers were low. Mm. So stop lying to yourself. You do care about what others think of you, and the second you realize that is the second you can start working towards getting more of what you want. I think the actual reason that Kara doesn't want to be told that she isn't ugly is because it points out how little work she puts into her appearance. Yeah. Which means if people call her pretty, they're actually calling her lazy for not doing self-care. I never want to get into this place where I feel like what I look like is more important than what I do. Being beautiful is It's not more, you know, it's almost eerie watching this because it almost gives me flashbacks to my old mindset. Like, because I didn't know that there were other people making videos the way I did before. Like, it's, like, it... It's a, it's a, uh, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's just an eerie, haunting feeling looking at this, looking at others, you know, going through a similar, inner, with a similar energy that I used to have. Not an accomplishment, and being ugly doesn't have to stop you from making accomplishments. Yeah, that's what everyone who doesn't take care of their appearance says because they have no idea how much work goes into being attractive. Probably the easiest way to show the amount of work required is to talk about how much time guys have to spend in the gym to look good, which is not even the <clears> full story because it doesn't count all the research that goes into learning how to lift properly or how to bulk and cut properly. Just those things are many hours per week and months or years of research and technique practice. Since in terms of appearance, the gym is largely optional for women, the female equivalent to the gym will be learning how to work with and take care of their hair especially mm. if it's long, but people Never who thought don't of it take that care way. of their appearance have very little respect for the time and effort that people who do take care of their appearance put in. And that's why people who don't work on their appearance don't get the attention. Unless you're like a really rich guy, because some girls will accept that, don't expect to get a person who takes care of their looks when you don't. Mm. For more information on the basics of being attractive, you can watch this video that I did here at the 19 minute mark. I talked about the show My Mad Fat Diary the other day, but basically that show is just this grand statement and a work of art showing that you can be fat or you can be ugly or you can be whatever it is that you are and you can still live and mm. do the things that you want to do and that means a lot to me you know I it's really eye-opening look seeing these clips of her because it almost like I can feel, it's like, I don't know what it is, but ever since I've really been practicing meditation and, and I'm not going to shut up about meditation because that was the catalyst for everything. Like whatever improvements I have made or how much better I feel, it all never would have happened without meditation and i'm just god it's like she's reminding me of me from a year ago just now i know how i feel like now i'm i get it when other people feel you know and i don't want to come across as harsh to this person but it comes across like, I get it. Like, all the people that were, that f may have felt disgusted by me in the past, looking at this person, looking at her, I get it. I get it. I don't think that we get that message enough. Ultimately, feeling beautiful or feeling ugly can feel like the same thing as long as you don't feel like either one of them has to get in the way of what you can do and of who you can be because they shouldn't and they don't but it does get in the way though 
people are very superficial and not working on your appearance will make it harder to make friends. It will make it more difficult to get a good job and it will make it very difficult, if not impossible for some, to find a relationship partner. You can take inspiration from the fat acceptance movement and gaslight yourself as much as you want about how your appearance doesn't matter, but that doesn't change reality, mm. especially in relationships. People don't have a value. They have a perceived value and everyone perceives it differently and how attractive you are is the average of how you are perceived. Some people are just delusional. You can say you're a 10 until you believe it, but you cannot say you're a 10 until I believe it. With that said, our friend Kara has another video on her channel, and what we see might come as a surprise. I feel like a monster right now who has just come out of hibernation. I have spent six or seven hours today lying in bed in pain. Wow, look at that. Ignore what she said. I'll get to that later. Instead, remember how I talked about the importance of showering and washing your hair? This is what it looks like when someone doesn't shower. This is what showering looks like. No shower. Shower. No shower. Shower. She looks way better here yeah. in the video where she showered. There are other self-care things she can do to look better, like reshaping her eyebrows, but this is a big improvement. Now, if you investigate further, when someone extensively doesn't take care of their appearance or has major life problems like the ones being discussed in this video, typically depression is a factor. I'm mm. not like a board-certified health professional, so it would be immoral for me to diagnose any of these people with a mental illness. Even Dr. K, who is a licensed psychiatrist, won't diagnose someone over an internet video. Hey, okay, all right. Uh, crap, I'm trying to remember the... Think before you sleep. I don't know what your name is right now, sir, but... The fact that you mentioned Dr. K gives you major points in my book because I, Dr. K and Joe Dispenza and Aaron Doty, those are the three people that helped me. The three people I watch on YouTube. Oh, shit. Hurry to 12. Thank you for subscribing. Um, those are the people. It's funny. I'm not even live streaming right now, and yet the alerts are somehow still coming through. All right, I think I found a way. Okay, I, I found a way to turn those off. Okay. Well, we've been, oh, wow, I've been going 32 minutes. Wow, this is going to be a long video. But, um, man, I'm, <laughs> I'm just wondering what the hell he's going to say about me. <laughs> you know, it's not my place to do a diagnostic assessment of you and say that you are or aren't mentally ill. That being the case, it would be great if all the amateur internet therapists would stop diagnosing their opponents with mental disorders as a way of making themselves seem superior, but I digress. That's a thing? I won't say these people have any specific disorders. However, I will point out what appears to be obvious to me, which is that when someone says they're depressed or they're diagnosed as depressed by a health professional, they tend to have a very good reason for being depressed. It's typically not random. But don't take my word for it. Here's Jordan Peterson saying hmm. it. So, and that's partly what I guide you through in the, in the future authoring program too, because it asks you to consider what I think are the main six dimensions of your life, you know? And so one of the things I do when a client comes is I just do a rough walkthrough of those dimensions. It's like, does anybody care if you're alive or dead? You know, so if, do you have any friends? Do you have anybody that loves you? Do you have an intimate relationship? How are things going with your family? Do you have a job? Are you as educated as you are intelligent? Do you have any room for advancement in the future? Do you do anything interesting outside of your job? And if the answer to all those is no, it's like, you're not depressed, my friend. You just are screwed. That girl from earlier, Akuto, had a family that was so toxic that she had to excommunicate herself from them. Huh. Myra West, okay. who made the No Friends video that I flashed on screen briefly at the beginning, also had a very toxic family that she no uh, longer speaks to. Okay. Now, I don't know Kara's full backstory, but she does have problems. So basically, all my life, at least since I was pretty young, I have gotten headaches and migraines now and then, and so mm. I'm kind of used to it. But over the past few months, they have gotten really bad and, like, very regular. A couple months ago, when after I'd had, like, three really bad migraines, three days in a row, on the third day of waking up with a migraine, I was hollow, and it had been a long time since I had felt that low of energy and that depressed. I'm not exactly sure what is triggering the migraines, and yes, I have tried to figure out it might be my room. It's possible that my room is full of deadly 
virus migraine giving things. What? Yeah, that sucks. I don't have migraines myself, but a number of people in my life have had them, and they essentially disable you, but in the worst way. Not only can mm. you not get up and do things when you have a migraine, mm. but any stimulation tends to make it worse, so you can't, like, watch TV or listen to something to pass the time. Yeah, I mean, I do get headaches from time to time. I don't know if it would be migraines, though, because I could still walk around and move around, but yeah, of course, like, when I get a headache, I would, wouldn't be able to watch TV or listen to music or play my guitar or... or do any or you know do any of those things that i usually do a lot of times you also can't sleep so you just have to stay awake in pain and stare at the wall for hours anyone would be depressed if they had to deal with that on a regular basis right. but i've seen enough people with migraines to know that outside of medical intervention when necessary migraines are all about prevention and you can actually get so good at preventing them mm -hmm. that they basically never happen i won't go into full detail but since we're talking about things like style and fashion and how to make things like a living space look more attractive, right, I will right, start right. off by saying that I would never guess that a girl lives in this room because there are no decorations along mm. with very bright, cool tone overhead lighting. Right. That's not the only thing that will cause migraines, but bright overhead lights are a big one. Mm. Get a floor lamp with a shade or a filter over it to soften up the light and change the light color to soft white instead of daylight. Not only will this make your living space more enjoyable to be in, because it's more enjoyable to be in an attractive space. But you know, I am really glad, though, that... Ah, sorry, my brain... Think, I'm really glad that Think... Also cut whoops, down on your head. I, I'm really glad that Think Before You Sleep is giving advice to the other people, you know, in this video, like offering suggestions and things like that, because definitely, uh, I'm just glad that there's someone out there that's not being, ah, oh, God, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm just glad that there's a guy like this who is actually offering advice for these people, giving them some tips and pointers, instead of simply there to just make fun of them and completely dismiss them. So now I'm really wondering what the hell he's going to say about me. <laughs> Do not use recessed lighting or overhead LED lights if you have migraines. Better yet, get some color changing bulbs. Those are great for making I've your room look better before. and making it so you can easily pick a light color that won't hurt your head. I really love color changing lights and they really up your mood whether you get migraines or not. Outside of that, I'm not going to go on a full migraine prevention rant because it's not <clears> super <throat> relevant to the channel. But if you do have migraines, I will put up a list on screen that talks about all the things I've found that prevent migraines. Hopefully this will help people who struggle with head pain. Shifting gears a bit, let's talk about male loneliness. Recently, a video talking about men's issues <sighs> by Shoe on Head went viral because she said things like this. Men are not just lonely when it comes to dating, they're lonely when it comes to friendship too. This is mm. something that I see a lot when viewers send me messages. I commonly get people saying that not only have they never been in a relationship, mm. but they also have no friends or very few people around them at all. Mm. Shoe on Head then goes on to point out all the hostile positions towards men that a lot of people on the left have, by showing some Twitter comments. Mm. The reason young men flock to alt-right MRA movements oh, is because God. the left gives brain-dead advice. And I'm, I just want to clarify something here. I'm saying, oh, God, because they're saying words associated with politics, and I d hate fucking talking about politics, and I... So uh, I'm just going to shut the fuck up on this one. ...to young men. We need to be more compassionate to them, for our own sake. I'm sorry, but how is respect women brain dead advice? What advice? Don't. Oh God. Don't be a rapist is bad advice. Oh but God, that word is on my. I feel suicidal. Um, have you considered not raping? Here's my actual advice I would give to my teen boys as a leftist: one, always get enthusiastic consent; two, save the planet; three, don't say that. It's actually kind of racist. Like, what the f is this? How does this address men and their issues? It doesn't. Why does their advice always seem to be, become a liberal? Hey, men, here's how to fix all your problems. Agree with me politically. Yeah, it's a pretty big turnoff when you say that you have a problem and someone tries to use that feeling of hopelessness or insecurity 
to indoctrinate you into their cult instead of actually trying to help you. It's so funny how men feel entitled to a girlfriend. No, you sexist freak. When one side is like, wanting a girlfriend is sexist entitlement, and the other side is like, here's how to get a girlfriend. I don't, I don't know, bro. Though to be fair, I think both woke leftists and red pill guys give trash advice when it comes to healthy relationships. Yes. Destiny being the latest victim of, being able to cheat is so cool until somebody finds someone they like more than you. Even huh? if the red pill guys are saying that only men can cheat, which is called an abusive <sighs> relationship, by the way, a woman would have to be an idiot to stay with and reproduce with a guy uh, who openly tells her that he thinks cheating is okay. Uh, it's so weird that red pill bros will make fun of women for being with guys like that, but also say, I should get to be a guy like that because of evolutionary biology. Rules. Exactly. Rules. Without them, we live with the animals. Anyway, these days, there are a lot of men who are lonely and depressed. I've watched a number of videos made by such men, but the one that stood out to me the most was this one. Oh, YouTuber shit. Who goes by <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, okay. It's funny. I don't know why all of a sudden I'm starting to feel extremely nervous right now. <laughs> such men but the one that stood out to okay. me lonely and depressed I anyway these days there are a lot <sighs> of men who are lonely and depressed i've watched a number of videos made by such men but the one that stood out to me the most was this one by a youtuber who goes by mr gaming guitarist <laughs> or jaron even that yeah. thumbnail look at that fucking thumbnail or where the video was paused at <laughs> <laughs> Oh, has been on YouTube since 2010. Yes. And in the yes. last couple of years, he's made a number of videos documenting his depression and his life issues. Mm. This next clip is from a video called I'm 27 mm. and I feel lonely mm. all the time. Yeah, I remember that. Hi, everyone. It's me, Mr. Gaming Guitarist. And I'm here yet again recording another video talking about how I feel like shit yet again. And it's a constant struggle, a constant pain in the ass. <laughs> but this, but making videos like this feels like it's the only way to get things off my chest. So, so that's why I continue to do them. Okay, I remember that. I remember that moment. I remember I was parked at Best Buy and I dropped off an Uber passenger. But it's so strange how you think that's who I am. This is how I'm feeling. And you, but that was that tone of voice looking defeated, sounding defeated. That it's so crazy because I thought. That was me feeling normal. It's so it's so weird how you have no idea how much progress you've made with yourself, with your mentality, uh, all of that stuff. You don't even. I, it's funny. I don't even realize it until this moment. Now, I'm looking at that video. I don't recognize that motherfucker anymore. <laughs> Wow, that is the voice of defeat. He sounds like he barely has the motivation to wake up, so good for him for actually doing that and working a job and driving some Uber. But after watching all these videos, this mm -hmm. essentially is how they go. A guy with a very apathetic voice turns on a camera, mm -hmm. says he's depressed, yep. and uses YouTube as a therapy session because they have no other method of voicing their issues. That's exactly what it, Man, it's so funny. He was talking about hair. It's like, God, it's like I'm looking at myself in this video and it's like come on here take it take the brush motherfucker take it <laughs> god i don't know why i'm enjoying roasting myself so much i don't know why it's just fucking funny i mean it's funny but looking at it back then it wasn't funny at all but now i can look back at it and say wow I'm so happy my head is not in that space anymore. I wanted to make this video because I feel 
lonely <clears throat> all the fucking time. And I don't know yep, how I to did deal with it. At the time. There's no one else to complain to other than this camera. Because I don't want to bother my, my, the, you know, I don't want to bother my two best friends, you know, burden them with this information. And, you know, there is no family that I can talk to that will understand this shit. And because the only family that talks to me is my, uh, is my aunt, but you know, she's 70, she's from the Philippines, I can't connect with her. She can't, she doesn't understand this stuff when I try to- See, I'm also noticing, I do, I make very little eye contact with the camera. I don't know if I still do it, it's not a thing that I'm consciously aware of, but... Like, I mean, I got, like, I haven't seen this video in a while, so, like, maybe not even, like, since I recorded it and, like, looked back at it. Like, why on earth would I have ever thought I was okay at that time, but, holy shit, this is just jarring to look at, to be honest. Explain all of it. And so even though I'm not technically alone, I just feel lonely all the goddamn time. I mean, yeah, and that's how I was. I try to make attempts to get out there mm -hmm. and socialize. Right, right. Try to make new friends. Try to, yep. you know. I remember how I was. Expand my social circle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. Here's the biggest difference from how I was in that video versus how I am now. I'm putting too much investment, way too much investment into the outcome because I wanted everybody to like me. I wanted, you know, I just wanted to be friend. I just wanted to make new friends and every pretty girl that I talked to, I wished that they would go out with me and if and if one guy didn't want to be my friend or if this girl didn't want to be my friend or if this girl that I'm that you know I wanted to ask out if she didn't respond to me I would get so upset so frustrated and it would ruin my whole day or at least a couple of hours and now the biggest difference is I'm not letting the I'm not letting the outcome of events determine my mood. I'm not going to let it influence my behavior and my emotions anymore. If I could go back and tell the Jaren from that video, this is what you need to do. I'm sure this whole process of feeling better and feeling like myself again, you know, the guy who loves rock and metal and synthesizer and pop mute and 80s pop music and who also loves live streaming like i just want to tell that guy remember what you enjoy doing put all your attention on that but but the other thing is i would have sent him that joe dispens video that immediately like that woke my brain up if i don't know if i'm making any sense at all but I'm just telling you the thoughts that are going through my head as I'm watching that old video of mine or seeing the clips that this guy put together. Yeah, I think a lot of people feel like that. <clears throat> Either they're in a position where no one's around mm -hmm. or they have trouble appearing vulnerable in front of people who are close to them, mm -hmm. so they hide their issues. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know what kind of people these friends are, but if they're close friends of yours, you'll probably find out that they're a lot more willing to listen and help than you think. Yes, because Keanu and Mo, the two best friends I mentioned, I have been talking to them about this stuff now, and they are incredibly supportive. And so, yeah, it's like you can't be afraid to tell the people you trust what's going on in your head. You just can't, because that's why they are your friends, because a good friend like Keanu, a good friend like Mo, they, and even the people in my band, Anthony and... Logan and Eric and and Alex, I can, you know, I I haven't been in contact with my band. Like, we haven't been talking, um, like, as much. But every time I go there, it's like, 
there's one thing that's bothering me, I tell them about it. They're very supportive. And so that's the thing, is I was letting fear determine my intent. I, I was letting fear and shame and guilt and anger and depression, I was letting all of those things determine how I felt throughout the whole day today. Whereas now you have to learn the right thing to do is become I, I don't know if this is too big of a word to use, but pretty much unshakable, if that makes any sense. You can't let what's going, and trust me, I know this is easier said than done. You cannot let whatever is going on on the outside world change how you feel on the inside. Because no matter what happens on the outside, you are still you and you have to always remember that no matter what you're just afraid to ask but that's not the only thing bothering jaron here's him responding hmm. to comments on a prior video oh god uh, one video i made a while ago where someone said okay comments on a prior video oh, okay okay this could be embarrassing <laughs> but that's not the only thing bothering <clears throat> jaron Here's him responding to comments on a prior video. On one video I made a while ago where... Oh, and by the way, uh, that handkerchief... I don't know if this is what I'm going to say, but that handkerchief is my face mask. Because that was, you know, during the time when the mask rules were still taking place and Uber said you gotta wear a mask when you're driving passengers, so I always much prefer to use that than those generic masks that, you know, fog my glasses and they get so fucking hot I couldn't stand that. At least that makes me feel a little bit more connected to Arthur Morgan and John Marston wearing that fucking handkerchief as a mask. <laughs> uh, could you imagine that? Me in the Red Dead world. <laughs> Said, this handkerchief is cringy as fuck and then there was another comment on that video the hell was it? oh holy shit i think that was me talking about that video called i'm 27 and never had a girlfriend i think it was in that specific video where he mentioned that <clears throat> uh where or i guess this may have been after i did that one as fuck and then where someone said this handkerchief is cringy as fuck and then there was another comment on that video the hell was it someone said it was oh yeah that's right it was the video of me talking about how i can never find a girlfriend in i think that was maybe one or two months ago but anyways the well it that was february that video not this one but that that viral video is was february february 2022 so now it's December 22nd, 2023 at 1.40 p.m. as of the making of this video. Uh, the other thing that really set me off was there was a video, sorry, a comment in there that said, it, it's not because of your looks. And then someone replied to that comment that said, yes, it is. And that made me... Oh, go oh God damn it, man. Is it... Am, oh God, am I about to say, am I, am I about to say here that, that I feel ugly? Oh Jesus. Oh, please. God, Jaron, don't, please don't say that. Think for the first time that I was fucking ugly. Fuck! I've never cringed at myself before. I agree with the guy who replied. Jaron, it is because of your looks. Looks are important in every kind of relationship. And when you show up on camera looking like that girl, Kara, yes, who did that's exactly it. That's exactly what I was saying. I was agreeing with this guy. Yes. Shower. Then women aren't going to find you attractive. Exactly. And yes. Yes. Respond to you well. However, I don't think that Jaron is ugly. <laughs> I think Jaron is the perfect example of someone who could be three to five points higher on a scale of one to ten. If he just took better care of his looks, the first right. thing that stands out about Jaron is how bad his hair is. Yes. It looks like he doesn't shower or comb it. Right, no, right. Show it. Okay, hang on. Okay, now you're, okay. 
I already combed it before, but let's just extra make sure. Oh, shit, sorry, I just hit the microphone. <laughs> so I'm trying to regrow it because I'm a rock and roll guitar player. Uh, damn it, I want to have long hair. <clears throat> It's funny, my hair was a lot longer than that in 2017. <clears throat> because that seems malicious, but I will say that it looks like his hairline is thinning on the top, so just as an announcement to all the guys who have that issue, protect your hairline. If you still have hair, then you still have time. You can prevent hair loss, but once you lose it, you probably won't get it back, and balding will heavily lower how attractive you are to women. See a dermatologist and work out a plan. Most of the prevention products aren't very expensive. You can also stop using name brand shampoo. Okay. I will say I went to every time I've gone to a barber shop, get a haircut, they tell me I am not balding. Your hair is very fine. You said you have very fine hair. Oh, Christy Smith and Brian Smith, thank you for subscribing. It's weird, I thought I muted the alerts on here. Okay. But anyway, yeah, I'm, uh, I just have very thin hair. It's funny because my dad had thick hair, my mom had thin hair. And. When I was younger, my hair was like my dad's, and now, as an adult, it is now, it, it is now, thin, it is, the texture is now thin. <clears throat> oh, shit. Hang on. Pose, most of the prevention products aren't very expensive. You can also stop using name brand shampoos because a number of them have lawsuits against them for putting chemicals in their products that cause balding. Mm. Check out rosemary water, don't drink alcohol, filter your water, especially if you live anywhere near farmlands, mm. and don't wash your hair every day. I mm. will also say that Jaren's thinning isn't that bad, so if he takes action now, he'll likely be fine. Mm. Now that the medical issues have been addressed, Jaren needs to shower and But, you know, I, I have seen those, uh, I have seen those, you know, uh, of course, all the podcasts that I love. I've seen, like, I think it was, like, Hymns or something else. I don't know. Uh, other products like it. I know Hymns is one one of those companies that does it. But uh, God, I really hope that he talks about my videos now, or at least I hope he has, because that was a representation of me back then. Absolutely not a representation of me today. Now that the medical issues have been addressed, Jaren needs to shower and comb his hair and shave that peach fuzz he has. As an example of how much of a difference those small changes would make, here's another YouTuber who does plastic surgery that has a similar- Holy shit, I actually saw this guy before. <clears throat> I think I was watching a video about like trying to find natural methods to try to, you know, make your hair thicker, but- uh... Look to Jaren and his hair looks better simply because he combs it. Now, right. when it comes to actually styling his hair, Jaren has a lot of forehead space, so right. one of the things you can do to look good is use his hair to cover his forehead, which will balance out his face. It's Again, funny, because I, I was doing that before, like, when I was really young, like, where I had, uh, my hair was, you know, forward, um, you know, covering parts of my forehead, but I told myself I didn't want to do that because... I don't know, because that's like what I was like when I was a kid, and I wanted to look grown up and all of that shit, but eh. Anyways, let's see what else. I will point out that Jaren is not actually ugly. He's <laughs> just terrible at fashion. Earlier, yeah. I said that he's been on YouTube for over a decade, mm -hmm. and because of that, we have a video of Jaren as a younger guy. <laughs> not every video yep. is like this, but in the 2010, that was me. Uh, I believe this was me reviewing Ray Ban. Wayfarer sunglasses. This particular video, he happened to dress pretty well, probably by accident. Yes, this is the same person. This is Jaron from 13 years ago when he was in high school. But you can see in this video that he uses his hair to cover his forehead 
and it looks way better. This also allows him to wear smaller glasses. And even though they're so, kind of what plain, he's telling is uh, me is I have to look like Leon from Resident Evil. <laughs> they are way more fashionable than the science lab goggles that he's wearing in the loneliness video. His shirt looks decent here as well, but I think a turtleneck would fit better than the mock neck that he's wearing. Oh, it's he's funny. I I was see. It's so funny. I'm not even thinking about all that stuff that he was saying in that uh, all those years ago. I'm pretty sure this was 2010. Or two, so obviously that makes him look better. But that's the neck that he's wearing. Oh, and he's thin here too, so obviously that makes him look better. But that's not all. Something that I haven't gone over in fashion yet are what are called essences. An essence is basically what physical archetype you are, and it gives <clears throat> you more information on what kinds of clothes would look best on you. If you want to get a little overview on essences for men... You can watch this video here, but I will warn you that essences are not as well established for men as they are for women, so it will be a little difficult to I've research. never heard of Everyone is a combination of multiple essence essences, before. but you want to start with your primary essence, which is what people notice about you first. Hmm. Jaren's primary essence is gamine, which means okay. he looks very youthful slash boyish. You can see that more easily in his videos from high school, which means that in terms of fashion, he would look good in the same kinds of clothes that someone <laughs> like Tom Holland wears. Though since Jaren is into rock music, he might want to dress more like Sound whoops. Soundgarden, one of the greatest bands of all time. Rest in peace, Chris Cornell. I miss him all the time. <clears throat> Cause I actually sang a cover of uh of Chris Cornell's version of no nothing compares to you. But anyways like a YouTuber named Justin Wang, who has very similar features. Justin knows how to dress, so Jaren can simply just copy him. <laughs> Justin balances out his forehead space by pulling his hair up, which is an alternative to using his hair to cover it. With that said, Jaren, you look like crap in this video, yep. but you aren't ugly. You don't take care of your appearance, and that's a part of the reason why you're having issues with women and with making friends. Speaking of, in a different video, Jaren talks about his troubles with rejection. Oh boy. Oh yeah, very fucking obvious just by looking at me, but I'm 27 years old, never kissed a girl on the lips before, which of course means I'm a fucking virgin, which of course means I've never had a girlfriend before, never dated anyone before. It hurts me a lot on the inside. At this point, you know, once... You know, the average American turns 27 years old. They should have, at the very fucking least, have had at least one fucking... God, it's so... It hurts watching this fucking video again. It really does. Kiss on the lips with a... With a... With like, a... I gave... I cared way too fucking much. And other women could sense that I cared too much about whether they said yes or no to me. Because these days, if I get rejected by, by if I get rejected by a woman that I want to ask out, I'll just say, oh, it's okay. I understand. Have a great day. And then move on. And I don't get, I, I'm not like anxiously anticipating that, you know, they're going to their text messages, uh, whether they respond to me or not. I don't think about that. St that stuff, does, it's like what I was saying before. I don't let outcomes determine what my mood will be. Uh, with a girl they like, this one thing feels like it's, ho it's holding me back in life. Because it was ho I f was holding me back because I was letting it hold me back. I was letting that feeling of I was letting it make me feel like I have failed. There is no road to recovery. You fucked up and there's nothing else you can do about it. That's how I felt. That's how I felt. Happily, I'm happy to say. Thank God I don't feel that way anymore. 
it makes me feel a lot lesser than other people. The second reason he's having trouble with women, and this is very common in the incel community, is that he describes women as sexual favors instead of as a person. Pay attention to the wording. He doesn't say, I've never experienced a loving relationship with another person. He says, I've never been kissed. I've never had sex. A lot of guys who have never been in a relationship have trouble seeing women as people simply because of lack of exposure, and that turns mm. women off. Just like... Yes, I agree with that. It's because it's like any time I would talk to a girl I was interested in, that is a huge, gigantic problem is because if it never ha is that I thought, oh, holy shit, she's talking to me. Holy shit. Please say, you see, even saying it out loud, it feels so fucking odd to say it out loud because it's so hard to believe that was my old mentality but it was just saying like wanting to be accepted so badly that and here it comes again all i cared about was the outcome instead of actually trying to get to know her as a human being you see the difference there because just like it is so amazing how much better you feel if you just simply take the fucking all those what one million pounds of pressure off of yourself and you just simply talk to her like you would talk to anybody else and let's just say life is a lot easier now because like i didn't even and it's so funny because i didn't even know what the fuck incel was before i even made that video because when i made that video like all of a sudden i kept seeing this word incel on the fucking comments all the time and because i don't pay attention to like this whole YouTube Gen Z slang, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And <clears throat> yeah, I'm just happy that I, I, it's so weird because it's like, I don't like occupying that headspace anymore. So if you're seeing me hesitate to come up with sentences, it's because I hate looking back at myself instead of simply taking a look at the present moment and just thinking about a vision of the future, doing the stuff you're passionate about, if that makes any sense at all. <clears throat> it would be a turnoff if you as a guy were seen as a wallet. And I mean, yeah, there are guys who get away with treating women like objects, but those are eights, nines, and tens. That's why women accept them. Also, presumably you want a healthy relationship, and those guys don't have healthy relationships. So he right. needs to treat women like people. That will change how he interacts with them, and primarily, he'll stop putting them on some unachievable pedestal. Yes, yep, yeah, that's pretty much, he said it much better than I could. Exactly. Put it, you cannot put women on a pedestal. You, you just can't. And instead, see them as a person who has their own thoughts, yep. desires. Exactly what I was just saying. ...and insecurities. And believe me, this is not for lack of trying, because I have been able to get different girls' phone numbers. You know, I've gotten at least fucking 10 or 20 different phone numbers where I see a pretty girl when I'm out in public, and then I just talk... God, to her, say, Hi. this has 600,000 views. Huh. But hey, I'm not going to complain because it gave me the audience that I have now. And I'm and like what I was saying before, it, it, I, I should just stop talking because it just sounds like I'm simply just repeating everything I've already said before. I'm happy at the progress that I have made and glad to continue to keep working on making more progress. Hi, my name's Jaron. How are you? And then, you know, have a good conversation. And then I try, and then, you know, I, we, and then, you know, we exchange 
phone numbers, and then that's the last I ever hear from them. I mean, if they're giving you their number, it means that you're at least good enough at conversation to get to that point. Half the numbers are probably fake, but they aren't outright rejecting you. I don't have any reason to believe that Jaren is misrepresenting this in an extreme way. I've watched a bunch of his videos, and he seems pretty decent conversationally. It really just goes back to not seeing women as people, and it takes some real audacity to approach- That's, you know what? Hang on. Oh, oh shit, I just thought of, I just thought of something really good. Because, okay. It feels like you had to change, like, it almost felt like you had to be, change your personality or act in a way that was different because at the time, I was thinking that if you are, if they see who I really am, they're going to hate me. And now instead, I don't change myself when I'm meeting someone new. Like, of course, you know, treat everybody kindly because that's basic common sense. But. Knowing what I know now, I, it didn't even register to me how horrible that mindset was. Approach a girl who takes care of her appearance enough for you to call her pretty and speak to her looking like you haven't showered in a week. Because it's like my face just kind of looks like repellent for pretty girls. I don't know why. I don't know why. Anyway, next Jaren talks about a girl he approached at a bar who gave him her number, or a fake number. Mm. Some time passes. She doesn't respond to text, but he sees her again at the bar on a mm -hmm. different day. Yep. Jaren does something stupid and approaches her to say hi when she obviously is not interested. So a different guy steps in. And it's because I was so fucking naive, ignorant, whatever it is you want to call it to be able to understand that. To get Jaren away from her. Then this rant ensues. He's fucking shoving me. He's shoving me. And then he says, leave her alone. All I said was one fucking sentence. Which is true. All I said was, hey, it's good to see you again. Hope you have a great day. And then I leave and then I walk away. And then, well, you know, it, I, I said it in the video, but what I will say is, I was so angry here because it felt like that was the culmination of how I felt on the inside at that time where it felt like I was so upset and it's like I couldn't handle what was, man, it's hard to, oh God, it's hard for me to talk about all this stuff because that's how I was, <clears throat> but I don't know if I'm even making any sense right now. Oh, wow. I've been going for one hour and 13 minutes. <clears throat> And then he's, and pretty, I just snapped, all right? And I, and this is what I said. I said, you know what? The okay, okay, here's the thing. This line that I said, I'll tell you where I, how, why I remembered it. It was from Casino Royale. It was that scene when Daniel Craig and Eva Green, I think they were meeting each other for the first time on a train and I think she said something to him about the old disposable pleasures line. And for whatever fucking crazy reason, I thought that would be the moment to say that line out loud. Because I thought it would be a cool thing to do.
difference is between guys like you and guys like me. Guys like me will treat her like a human being, and guys like you <clears> will <throat> treat her like a disposable, uh, fuck me, disposable pleasures. No, you wouldn't. You described women as kisses and sex. A lot of the air quote nice guys don't realize this, but they're the oh, he, oh, okay. I think he's about to get into something that Dr. K was saying, where, why that whole nice guy mentality is so horrible. It's because I'm pretty sure he's about to hit the nail on the head right here. And as kisses and sex, a lot of the air quote nice guys don't realize this, but they're the same type of guys, the ones they don't like. The yes. only difference is the guy he's criticizing is attractive to women. If they had the chance, they would treat women with a similar amount of apathy. After this moment, Jaron goes into a really intense story where he talks about losing a girl he was friend zoned by mm, yep. after he said he liked her. Yep, yep, this yep. This was a pivotal moment for him because he almost ended his life afterwards. Yeah. And he really opens up about how bad his depression is during this part of the video. Right. So I'll say it like I said with the other people. Jaron has very good reasons for being depressed. This is not just random, and <clears> I don't think it's genetic either. He's gone through some stuff. There's a reason why his life is the way it is. His dad yeah. died when he was 14, yeah. likely from obesity issues yeah. because he was 600 pounds. Mm. His mom yeah. had a stroke yeah. a few years ago, yeah. which rendered her unable to speak or walk, mm -hmm. which is incredibly sad, and it was hard to hear when I listened to it. Worse, he tried to get government assistance because he's broke, and taking care of a stroke victim is expensive, but the government responded by hauling her away to some facility that was mm -hmm. so far away that he mm -hmm. couldn't see her. Yeah. And then yeah. they proceeded to steal his childhood home from him. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. understand the full timeline, but as I'm aware, he hasn't seen his mom since, which mm -hmm. was several years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's still alive, and I don't know if he was mm -hmm. able to get the house back, but currently nope. he's not homeless. As I said, Jared's been through some real stuff. There's a reason he has issues with depression. Mm -hmm. However, I think if you address the main ones... It feels like I'm using at that... Definitely, looking back at that video now, I'm using my... Dip, ah, shit. Okay, god damn it. Oh, god, I had it. Fuck, and then it went away. God damn it, thought. Come back. It felt like I was using being depressed as an excuse to think simply not taking the steps to improve myself would be enough and simply telling women my story would get me a girlfriend. That was how my brain operated at that time and it it sounds shitty i know it sounds shitty but what's even scarier was at the time not realizing how shitty it was how shitty this was and in, in in those years because i was taking there was a lack of responsibility for trying to, f you know, the whole fucking self-improvement thing. It's that. It's just saying, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, I'm depressed, and then never but staying that way. And that's why when I tell you guys, if you are watching this video, and you are depressed, watch Joe Dispenza. It was the beginning of everything changing for the better. Please watch him. <clears throat> Be to give him some career success, find him more friends, and find him a relationship. Wait. His problems with depression, huh? career success, change Wait. with depression. However, I think if you address the main ones, which would be to give him some career success, find him more friends, and find him a relationship, his problems with depression and mental health would largely go away. Okay, yeah, it's because I was never on the path to staying committed to YouTube or to practicing guitar um, or singing more seriously. It's like I was, I always said, I wasn't doing those things. 
I always said I was never like, I always said, this is what I want. And yet I was never taking any action. And so when all the stuff happened with my mom, I was, I was still stuck in that mode of not doing anything. And so thank goodness that I know all this stuff now. That's, that's, that's the one thing that uh, I'll keep repeating over and over again. Thank goodness I'm able to, I'm, I know what I know now. He would be a completely different person. Now he would still have to deal with his traumatic life experiences and therapy, but those issues of dealing with loss would be way easier to handle if other stuff was taken care of. A lot right. of mental issues are created by a pileup of many different problems mm -hmm. being added together. Yeah. If you can get rid of some of them, your life will be way easier to mm -hmm. manage. The good news is that this video was made a couple of years ago, and Jaron mm -hmm. has a little update. Here he is talking at 29. Hey, everyone. It's me, Mr. Gaming Guitarist. So I wanted to make this video because I've been live streaming a lot more often lately. And I keep getting asked the same question so many times. People keep asking me, hey, do you have a girlfriend yet? And my answer to that is no. But I already know how far I've come because you can tell I can say that with a smile on my face and I'm okay with that. Wow. His voice is way different and way more relaxed. I will also add a side note now that I've seen other videos of his, like this recent one. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. oh my god. Oh, oh, I was laughing so hard at my fucking Oh. Oh. He even saw that video of me getting rid of the uh, my beard when I didn't shave during all of November, and this is like a couple weeks ago. Also, at a side note, now that I've seen other videos of his, like this recent one of him shaving, I don't know why he did that, because if he just styled his facial hair, it would look pretty good. But he's definitely gone through some changes in these past two years. <laughs> Ever since that video happened, I really made a conscious effort to start meditating. That has made the single biggest difference in my mental health way more than any of the antidepressant medication ever did for me. Meditation and a couple of Dr. K videos fixed a lot of his problems. It's impressive how much progress he's made just based on what he's saying and how he's... Holy shit, he said that's Im the stu uh, My current mindset is impressive. Hol holy shit medication ever did for me meditation and a couple of dr k videos fixed a lot of his problems it's impressive how much dr k joe dispenza aaron doty those three saved me i cannot stress that enough progress he's made just based on what he's saying and how he sounds i'm sure at this point he has a lot more perspective on his mentality from the prior two videos he still has issues but he mm -hmm. looks like he's handling his life way better than before mm. However, as far as I'm aware, he still doesn't have an actual job. That's all. Uber driving. Uber driving. Oh, that. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That was before when the engine died on the Chevy Cruze and I was still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was still not. Do, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I wanted is I wanted to be a musician and I wanted to be able to talk about entertainment. For and I hope he saw because he saw that beard trimming video. I hope he can see I'm in the band now. I'm making progress, and and yeah, Uber is is Uber's going good. Living, I wanted to be able to what to make videos on YouTube talking about all my favorite stuff. Here's the and now thank good and now thanks to all the viewers I've got now and the subscribers I've got now, I'm building momentum. You know since. Uh, 2010, or if you really want to go back, 2008, when my old channel, um, got three copyright strikes, but, um, but yeah, since pretty much since I was 14, my dream 
of wanting to become a YouTuber, wanting to become a professional musician, it's finally happening. It's finally happening. So for all of those you guys out there that are saying, I'm never going to get what I want. I'm never going to get what I want. Number one, meditate. <laughs> but still, you can't give up on your dreams. Because if I said, fuck it, I'm never going to play guitar anymore. I'm not going to sing anymore. I'm not going to live stream myself playing video games anymore. I'm, if I said, I'm not going to make YouTube videos anymore. It's like, if I stop doing that, just after I made that, you know, that viral video with 600 something thousand views, if I just ended it right there, I never would have gotten to experience all this momentum, all this amazing support that I'm seeing. I never would have been, I, I never, now I, it's just, it's so surreal now that there's this guy, uh, think before you sleep with 779,000 subscribers where he made a video talking about me with 260,000 views four days ago that never would have happened would have happened if I just simply said well I guess I'm not going to do it anymore that's the thing because right when you're about to give up on your passion you never know when tomorrow or the next week, the next month, hell, the next six months, the next 12 months, you will never know when that boost, that momentum that you want is going to be just around the corner. You're never going to know until, guess what? Just keep showing up. You keep showing up. And that's why even then, like more recently, if I'm not feeling good or anything, I will still come here. I will still make my videos. Oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. Shit, shit, shit. What happened? What happened? What happened? What did I do? What did I do? Okay. Okay. Thank God. Okay. Thought I lost my spot. Anyways. Yeah. That's, I hope, I hope that made any sense. I hope that made some sense to make videos on YouTube for a living. Position. And I wanted to be able to talk about entertainment for a living. I wanted to be able to, what, to make videos on YouTube talking about all my favorite stuff. Here's the unfortunate end to this story. Looking at Jaren's channel, it's been a bunch of years and he still isn't successful at YouTube. The outlook is not good. His only videos that perform well right. are ones where he's getting sympathy views. At this rate, he probably will never be able to do YouTube for a living. However, <clears throat> after watching a ton of well, it's so funny though because, like, I you know I don't want to say the dollar amount, but I I'm earn like, of course not enough for a full time income. Of course that'll you know I'm not giving up on that, but I am seeing all the years that I have been doing this and the years in coming back to this and trying to make a real serious effort to come back to YouTube, I'm seeing that I'm seeing that dedication, that commitment to it. Now I'm seeing it pay off and it's just inspiring me to continue to keep on doing this more and more. Cause now I'm even getting mess. I'm even getting, uh, oh God. hold it together. Hold it together. Jaron, hold it together. I'm, <sighs> Because I'm even getting messages now where people are saying, your videos are helping me through a really hard time. And, like, if I'm able to help someone, just me being me in my videos and my live streams, if I'm able to help someone make someone feel better like that is such an incredible feeling and it just motivates me to keep to keep going with this <clears throat> videos probably will never be able to do youtube for a living however after watching a ton of his videos i do think he has a lot of potential to be successful as a content creator but he needs a mentor. I don't really do this that often because when I gave my advice freely to everyone, the vast majority of people took hours of my time and did absolutely nothing What's with it. What's going on? Most people were like Boogie2988 
and didn't actually want to put in the hard work that it takes to succeed at YouTube. It's, it's hard like to get him to focus on that. Trajectory. It's hard to get him to focus on that. I um, yeah. I haven't really said this publicly, but I I was at Buggy's house just a few weeks ago. I was trying to get him to like make just like you know normal content about games and stuff. And when he posted it, he was like, "Oh, that was a good idea. You maybe post a video about the Danis fight. It's like a three out of ten. Like that was a good idea." And I was like, "Yeah, you should do that every day." But for some reason, like. Nick, Nick, you and I have talked about this. There seems to be this, like, lol cow gene where no matter how much good yeah. advice you give one of these people, they refuse to take it and actually better them, you know, better themselves. So, yeah, a lot of people have wasted my time, so these days I'm picky about who I help. However, Jaron looks like a person who would do well with some coaching, so open call. Jaron, if you see this, send me a message and I'll help you with YouTube. With the right direction, you could easily go from 13K subs to 50 to 100,000 subs in one year. Based on what Jaron said in that last video, I think he knows this next thing conceptually, but I'm going to say it anyway because there are other people who don't, and a lot of people think that things will just get better if they wait. Certainly time can help, but if you aren't actually putting work in, then life is very content with leaving you in the exact same place, except now you're 20 years older. And for an example of that, we have Defying Odds Donnelly, who is in his late 40s and has no friends. This next clip is from a video called Being Up Wait, in Late Forties. Hang, hang on. Hang on. He just said he wants to mentor me. A guy with 700 plus thousand subscribers wants to help me? Holy sh! Oh wow! Holy shit! Hey, I, I'm so sorry. I don't know what your name is. Think before you sleep. Y let yes, I. We need to get in contact because it has since I was thirteen years old. Wait. Sorry, 14. Since I was 14 years old, I've wanted to m make YouTube videos and be a musician for a living. Those are the two things I've always wanted for my career. And I mean, the fact that you want to help me out with all of this stuff, that's. I. I'm stunned. I, I, it's kind of still in a state of shock right now. Hang on, I need to, I need to go back and listen to that again. Make sure that this was real and not my fucking imagination. Jaron said, send me a message and I'll help you with time. So these days I'm picky about who I help. However, Jaron looks like a person who would do well with some coaching, so open call. Jaron, if you see this, send me a message and I'll help you with YouTube. With the right direction, you could easily go from 13k subs to 50 to 100,000 subs in one year. Based on what Jaron said in that last video, I think he knows this next thing conceptually, but I'm going to say it anyway because there are other people who don't, and a lot of people think that things will just get better if they wait. Certainly time can help, but if you aren't actually putting work in, then life is very content with leaving you in the exact same place, except now you're 20 years older. And for an example of that, we have Defying Odds Donnelly. Okay, I have to, I have to get in contact with him. Uh, I don't know if he's on Discord or I think Discord would probably be a better place, the best place for that. Uh, hey, um... Think before you sleep. If you're watching this, if you're watching my video of me reacting to your video, yes, let's, we, we, we gotta get into contact. Who is in his late 40s and has <clears throat> no friends. This next clip is from a video called Being Ugly and Having No Friends at 46 from over two years ago. What do I mean by being ugly? Being ugly is more than just about looks. It can be about personality, how you... Behave around other, uh, behave around other people. Uh, okay, I don't want to judge this guy. I think his name is this guy Donnelly. If I don't do something now, like getting into contact with Think Before You Sleep, if I don't talk to the, if I, I could be that guy.
I don't want to be that guy. <clears throat> um, your sense of humor. And so, obviously, it would be logical to reason that the reason why I have no friends, people who I can call up on, have a conversation with, win, uh, find someone to win, willingly hang God, out with it's me. like, it's almost like looking at a parallel universe, an alternate timeline where this happens, where I continue to make videos talking to the camera and I'm not making any efforts to improve anything. Like, you know, I don't mean to get all of that out just from watching this person for a couple of seconds, but holy shit, it's almost like, it's almost like being Scrooge in a Christmas Carol, looking at the ghost of Christmas future, and you're seeing that. Is probably safe to say because there is something ugly about who I am. Much like you, oh, he's only thinking that because I'm go just going to guess that guy. I think his name is Donnelly. That guy is only saying he's ugly because he's so used to saying it over and over and over and over again. He's probably addicted to feeling bad. I don't know because that's how I was. I don't think he's There's something ugly about who I am. Much like the others, I don't think he's ugly. He just really doesn't know how to present himself. For example, he filmed this video in a Where's Waldo t-shirt. <laughs> Terrible fashion choice. His lighting is awful, and the only wall decorations he has are a thermostat, a light switch, and what looks like a speaker for a doorbell. This guy has no style. Put a picture on the wall. Put like a little statue or something on that railing back there. Put some nice curtains on that window on the left. Breathe some life into this home. He's also doing that upward camera angle thing, which looks terrible. That being said, I can imagine that a lot of you can guess what's coming next. You gotta admit, it's probably not there very we go. Okay. come across a guy who's close to 50 years old who's never had a girlfriend. This video was shot much later than the previous one. In the Where's Waldo t-shirt video, he's 46. In this one, he's a few months away from 49. Oh, but yeah, okay. you can tell by looking at his yeah. living space that a woman hasn't been in his life before because there's no art anywhere. And if he wants one, then he should consider learning how to decorate because the bad lighting and the walls with nothing on them is I mean, when I'm able to have my own apartment, I'll be able to put a sound garden, a poster, a... a you know, a Van Halen poster, all that stuff. Creep a girl out. Come on, man. You go to a woman's house, her house be comfortable as shit. Women love comfortable <laughs> surroundings, so men get comfortable surroundings. Most of these people are ugly because they don't know anything about art or presentation. So when they try right. to get people to be their friends, they come off as weird or creepy. Yeah. And it's not like this guy doesn't try. He definitely does try. He seems to be very outgoing and is out in public all the time. Uh, I get out there and ski. Obviously, I come across a lot of people when I'm skiing on the mountain. Even during this time, when we're having to like socially distance and whatnot. I'm doing cycling. Uh, and then, of course, before the pandemic, I was doing obstacle course racing, Tough Mudder, Spartans, even going to like post uh, after parties and whatnot. So it was not like I wasn't not putting myself out there. Well, there's your problem right there. You aren't meeting people who are on your level. Mm. You've got like goober energy or autistic energy, and you're trying to interact with normal people. You need to find other people who are like you, which is possible. Those Yeah, and that was the other thing too. Like, I'm pretty sure that the reason why whenever I go out and I try to be friends with anyone, it's pr and you know, they don't respond. It's because we, we probably don't have a ton in common or something. I don't know. I don't know, but that's so important though. You have to have people in your life that sound that, that love this, you know, 
it is crucial to have similar interests. <clears throat> Most people go to Star Trek conventions, board game shops, or play Magic the Gathering. That's where you'll find those people, and every time I've watched by a board game store or a place that does things like Warhammer 40K, those places are super packed and have lots of events. So either find people who are like you or fix the things about you that are turning normal people off. The problem is that he knows something's wrong, but he can't figure out what. Obviously what I've been doing is not working, so I need to kind of switch, switch the routine a little bit, make myself more neutral, strip myself of any annoyances, and just kind of start from the, from the beginning. Maybe, maybe I can be like an observer, kind of watch how other people interact. What, what are the types of things they say? I can tell you right now what's putting them off. First, on your channel, you call yourself Donnelly. If that's how you introduce yourself, then stop because that sounds like a child's name. Either go by Donnell or preferably Don. In fact, I'm calling you Don for the rest of the video because that sounds much better. How a name sounds is important. Second, your voice is also very off-putting. You're this really big guy, yet you have this super high vocal register. It doesn't match your frame. You also keep doing this sound every few seconds and it's kind of annoying. That's probably the easiest thing to fix though. Last, the way you enunciate and pronounce words is a little weird. It's like you don't know how to make the individual sounds properly with your mouth. Fortunately, this is a very fixable problem, and also fortunately, despite being unemployed, Don is not poor. I think his parents were rich and he got an inheritance, or he had some money saved up from a prior career. That being said, take some of that money that you have and hire a speech therapist or a vocal coach to teach you how to speak properly and more attractively. You have a speech impediment, but you probably could make major progress on this in just a few months. Because I have an ugly persona, it is logical. It is a logical assumption to assume that that's probably why I have no friends. That's probably why I'm a loner. That's probably why I have difficulty finding a good job, why I can't even get an interview. I have no network. Absolutely. Being a little weird and not knowing fashion will keep you from getting hired, as well as a lot of other stuff. From a physical perspective, Don already hits the gym a lot and is super active, so he's already maxed out in that respect. However, proportionally, Don is always doing the wrong stuff. He has massive <coughs> shoulders, which is good, women like that. However, the cost of that is that it makes your head look small. When you have these massive shoulders and nothing to balance them out, you end up looking like a Goomba from the 1980s <laughs> Super Mario Brothers movie. Or at least, that's what I look like when my hair is short, which is why I don't buzz cut my hair like Don does. I'm not an expert on hairstyles, but at the very least, Don needs to grow his hair out a little bit and learn how to style it. This will make his head look less small relative to the rest of his body. The second thing that sticks out to me about Don is that he kind of has a long neck, and he keeps wearing these tops with low necklines or super low necklines, and it looks weird. Like, these specific tank tops are probably creeping people out. I would stop wearing them if I were him. Fortunately, a lot of times, these guys will make good fashion choices on accident. For example, look at this jacket he's wearing in this video. I hate the color, but the fit with the high open collar looks great on him. Wear stuff with higher necklines like this, and stop wearing those low-cut tank tops. If you want to wear a tank, then wear this type. Like, is it not shocking how much better Don looks with the correct camera angle, the correct top, and lighting that doesn't make him look super pale? Also, the background is beautiful. This looks like a guy who's get Colorado? a girlfriend. This looks like a guy who's worth hiring. And this looks like a guy who people would want to be friends with. Take this screenshot and use it as your dating profile photo. You're welcome. And by the way, it's not like Don is a loser. There are a lot of things that he does that are very respectable. He's super ah. active and he's doing tons of crazy stuff in his mid to late 40s. Well, hey, he's I'm glad when I said, when I said that stuff, like that tells you exactly about first impressions because I thought that Don wasn't doing any of this stuff. Um, you know, he's way more active than I am. So, you know, I'm glad I was wrong about, you know, my first um, my first impression when I said stuff is I hope I don't turn out like that guy and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, he's clearly yeah, I mean, he's think before you sleep is you know, he's pointing it out. It's just things that need to be worked on just like how I have things that I things that I need to be worked on that ah, shit. That didn't make. Okay. Now I'm struggling to come up with complete sentences again. God, how long is this fucking video going on? Okay. One hour, 44 minutes. Okay. But anyways, yeah, it's really, it's uh, and yeah, there's things that he needs. There's 
He has work that needs to be done. I have work that needs to be done. That's what I was trying to say. Babe, as much as these people appear to have depressing lives, that doesn't mean they can't change them. I think Joe Rogan explained it really well on ah. a podcast he did with Graham Hancock. In all of my the bad experiences and mistakes that I've made, I really wish I didn't make them, mm -hmm. but I did, and they make me who I am today. And you learn yep. from them. I learned yep. from them. I understand yep. life better because of mistakes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people <clears throat> oftentimes dwell on mistakes and think that that defines them. Right. But, That's the thing. You, you don't dwell on it. It doesn't define you. What defines you is your ability to, first of all, become conscious of what's going wrong, being able to fix it. I'm glad at least I've been able to figure out some of it. Some of it. But, hey, uh, God, I hope he, you say your name at the end of the video. Hang on. Because I, I got to figure out what his name is. But seriously, I will contact you. I, I need to figure out if my audience can talk to your audience, can figure out a way for the two of us to get in contact. I will do it because I am absolutely taking up, taking you up on that offer because I greatly appreciate that. And it can be a real problem, particularly with young people that are insecure, that have had like some sort of a disastrous thing happen, mm -hmm. like a uh, business failure, being fired, yeah. become a drug addict, go to jail, yeah. whatever, whatever it is, yeah. steal something. And then you're defined by the worst mistakes that you've made, yeah. and that becomes you forever. If you're a person who's uh, 35 years old and you feel like, oh, my God, how could I fuck this up so bad at 35? I'm such a loser. Yeah. Like, no, this is just what happens yeah. with humans. These are mistakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. like, people make mistakes. and you got It's like what Rocky said in Rocky Balboa. It doesn't matter how hard you fall or how many times you fall down. What matters is can you get back up? to be able to rebound and learn from it and that's the process of growth and yeah. that's the only way it gets to you right a few things go wrong and some people will allow those things to define their entire life as and that is uh hang on let me let him finish that sentence right a few things go wrong and some people will allow those things to define their entire life as miserable right i was letting that shit from my past define me and until I listened to Joe Dispenza's interviews and began meditating and also watching Aaron Doty and Dr. K. It, okay, I, it feels like I'm just repeating myself. You don't have to do that. You can actually redefine your entire history by making changes in your life today. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if you're 19, 29, yep. or 49. Yep. You still have yep. time. Even in Don's case where he's nearly 50, mm -hmm. there's still time to get what he wants. Right. If he stays active and eats healthy, which is something he does, right. then he still has like 30 to 40 years left, maybe longer. Right. He very well could be just at the halfway point. Mm -hmm. So why spend the rest of his time in the same lifestyle that he's already tired of? Right. And certainly, if Don still has a chance despite his age and despite his flaws, you in your 20s or 30s have no excuse. The best part is that once you make major life changes that improve your situation, You'll pretty much forget how miserable your past was, and you'll instead be focused on how good your life has become. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, okay. That's his Twitter account. Anyway, thanks for watching. Okay. Twitter. Okay. All right. Okay. I. Okay, what is his name? Don't still Oh, it's so stupid that they changed their name to the letter, just one letter. But um I gotta figure out how to contact him. But anyways. Oh whoops, 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 whoops. whoops. Oh, 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 oh. Nope. Dub okay. picked the up. Alright, 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 alright. Well, anyways, think before you sleep. I'm so glad my 
YouTube. Um, I'm so glad that my viewers told me to watch your video. You know, it's, you know, very clearly well done. So, yes, I got to find a way to in contact with you, because if you are willing to mentor me, I greatly appreciate it and can't thank you enough. Because, I mean, clearly, if you have 700,000 subscribers and you were able to get uh, 260,000 views in just a couple of days, you're doing something right, and I want to be able to learn from that. So, anyways, yeah, we we need to get in contact. Um, and if this is somehow your first time watching me, uh, if you're new to the channel, I make videos about guitars and video games and also talk about my mental health. So anyways, this video is already very long and thanks for watching and I'll see you, uh, on the next one. Bye.